In this video, we take you to an agricultural research site to show you how to do soil field measurements and take soil samples for later analysis in the lab. But before you do any field work, careful preparation is essential. This includes checking the weather forecast, selecting soil sampling sites, preparing the sampling protocol, and packing the equipment and charging the batteries. Welcome to the ATB in Markland. Here, just north of Potsdam, the Leibniz Institute for Agricultural Engineering and Bioeconomy runs a digital field lab on more than 20 hectares. A range of institutes make use of these facilities to do research on topics like precision farming, food safety and quality, sustainable agriculture, or the impact of climate change. Our group takes advantage of this unique environment to test algorithms and study processes at a scale between lab and the real field under somewhat controlled conditions. It is early May, and in this part of the world, most fields are still pretty bare. Ideal conditions to look at the soil with hyperspectral eyes and collect reference data for algorithm training and validation. The protection of our soils and soil health is an important thematic uh, nowadays. Soils act as uh, storage for carbon, and they are also very important for uh, crop production and uh, for food and uh, uh, timber production. So we are today in the field because we want to do soil spectroscopy measurements uh, to characterize the properties of the soils. For example, uh, we can characterize very well the amount of organic carbon in the top soils. Uh, we can characterize the soil moisture content also uh, based on soil spectroscopy measurements and also some key variables like carbonate contains, uh, salt contains, texture like clay, which is important for fertility, um, are important variables that we can measure with uh, and determine with uh, soil spectroscopy. Okay, let's get started. As we want to collect field spectra and the device needs time to warm up, we switch our spectrometer on first. Now it's time to find your established or pre-selected sampling points with your GPS. No matter if you are revisiting old sampling points or new ones that you selected based on your sampling scheme, ensure that the soils are bare and dry and not, for example, covered by residues, as the imaging spectrometer can only sense the surface. Also that the area you want to sample is in the middle of the field, not at the edge, and homogeneous with respect to the pixel size of the sensor you want to work with. Stop! Before we cause any more damage, we take a photo of the site. As usual, we urge you not to forget to take notes on every data you collect as well as anything you observe in the field. It's good practice to prepare a field protocol and fill in the columns while you are working. Wow, we've already spent more than 30 minutes. The longer the better, but the spectrometer should now be warm enough. Time to start our measurements. And here, what is uh, very important in the field, especially uh, to be careful with, is the, the solar radiation. So we have to go on a cloud-free day uh, with lots of uh, solar uh, radiation. We also have to be very careful with our geometry and our position to the sun. We have to place ourselves uh, so that the operator uh, does not make any shadow on the measurements, also that there is no backscattering. You can see also all the people in the field are wearing uh, black uh, clothing, which is advised uh, not to disturb the optical measurements. First, Catherine and Robert set up the white reference panel on a tripod. The panel needs to be leveled carefully. I'll explain in a minute what it is used for. First, we get Katrin dressed. Robert carefully assists in shouldering the backpack with the spectrometer. It's an ASD field spec 3, by the way. Once the backpack fits, they can attach the laptop used to control the device. Then, Robert unrolls the fiber optic cable with the light sensitive head. Careful now, Robert. You really don't want to bend that cable. And just as carefully attaches the measurement pistol that ensures Katrin looks like a Ghostbuster. Just kidding. The pistol helps to hold the cable head stable and control what we are measuring. Ready. Catcher this fully dressed with the spectrometer and battery packs in a backpack, pistol attached to the fiber cable and laptop in front of her chest. 
Then you can start the measurements. So there is a sequence of actions that you have to do. So first, uh, of course, you bolt yourself in with the spectrometer and the laptop and the cables. And then you go in the field and then you also place yourself in toward the geometry with a triangle, like with the sun, yourself, the operator, the target where you are measuring so that all these measurements uh, do not enter in conflicts. And then you start the measurements themselves. So first you have to optimize the signal to the incoming solar radiations. So this is made by acquiring uh, once over the white reference. And then you have to reacquire the white reference. And now this is to calibrate your measurements to uh, determine the reflectance. And after uh, you are ready, basically you can go and walk toward the field and walk to toward the surface that you want to measure. Uh, because in one place maybe you have uh, some clay-rich soils, in another place a uh, carbon-rich soils, in another place some wet soils, so you want to characterize uh, the measurements. Now it's time to set acquisition and saving options. Catch and control some via the RS Cube software. In the field, we recommend to set the values of averaging for dark current, white reference, and spectral measurements to 50 in stable conditions. If the atmosphere or the surface seem to change quickly, Better set the spectra averaging to 25 to go quicker. Next, we come back to the white reference panel that Katrin and Robert set up earlier. The panel serves as a Lambertian surface, reflecting close to 100% of the incoming radiation pretty evenly in all directions. Katrin carefully places the pistol over the panel, taking care not to cast a shadow, performs a dark current calibration to account for instrument noise, and subsequently a white reference calibration. This second calibration ensures that all following measurements can be set in relationship while the panel serves as 100% baseline. Then, measurements are in relative reflectance to the panel. To become absolute reflectance, measurements will have to be divided in the post-processing by the calibrated spectrum of the panel. By the way, the panel used today has a spectralon or barium sulfate surface. Alternatively, a zenith white reference could be used. Okay, that was a lot of preparation, but now Catherine is ready to take a first measurement. She simply holds the pistol over the ground, level, and takes a measurement every few steps. Wow, do you see the atmospheric water vapor bands as big spikes? Your sampling scheme might differ depending on the purpose of your measurements. In soil spectroscopy, we sometimes like to use an accessory device called contact probe. As the name suggests, it is in contact with the surface, and as it's also got its own light source, and is mainly used to be independent of variable illumination at atmospheric conditions, or even cloudiness. Since there is now a different light source, Caption needs to re-perform the optimization and the white reference calibration. Actually, in the field, white reference calibration should be performed every two minutes anyway. And that's already it. Get in contact with the soil and collect a measurement. On the downside, the field of view is small and the soils are pressed on the glass and not anymore in natural conditions. You need to choose carefully if the benefits outperform this disadvantage in your data collection needs. Actually, we don't take too many measurements in the field. One thing we assess regularly is soil moisture, for example with a Theta Probe soil moisture sensor device. For all other analyses, we collect a soil sample. Though the solar radiation can only enter the top few microns, we assume that the top soil horizon on arable fields is getting mixed by regular plowing, and thus sample about the top 2-4 to four centimeters of the surface. Avoid dry plant residues and rocks, and ensure that you collect enough material for your subsequent lab analyses. Some require quite a bit of soil substance, and depending on your research question, you might want to reduce the sample by sitting to a maximum particle size. And that's it. All other measurements require a lab, so we pack our gear and head back to Potsdam. At the GFZ, we present another good practice example of scientists sharing resources, as we are taking our samples to Helicott's Helmholtz Laboratory for the Geochemistry of the Earth's Surface. Here, Katchen starts the preparation of soil samples. First, all samples need to be dried. 
don't leave moist samples sealed in plastic bags for too long. Prior to any lab analyses, we usually dry all samples in a drying oven at 40 degrees Celsius for several hours. Depending on the analyses you want to perform and the condition of the soil samples, you might want to adapt the temperature and time. For all subsequent measurement, Chris slightly grinds the dried samples with a mortar and pestle and sieges them to less than 2 millimeters, that is, sand, silt, and clay particles. For spectrum measurements in the lab, he places some material in specific transparent sampling containers adapted for soil spectroscopy measurements. And that's it. For all other properties, we actually send the samples to a specialized lab for geochemical analyses. In the summary, we recommend for successful field work to plan your campaign and sampling design carefully in advance, to stick to bare soil areas in the middle of the field, to sample areas suitable in size to your study's requirements. For spectral measurements, to allow sufficient warm-up time, to wear dark clothes, to avoid bright or reflecting surfaces near the target, do not cast a shadow on anything you want to measure, to measure under stable illumination conditions, to repeat white reference and, if necessary, optimization. And finally, to always keep notes